Okay, well, well, welcome back to Redbridge Lakes. I'm Gordon, and um, I've got Tom here with me today. Um, just a quick introduction of why I've asked Tom to come along. I, uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, I noticed that a lot of the match anglers were catching these great big perch, and um, I thought to myself, I wonder what this lure fishing will, will produce if I've got some guys down here to do it. And um, so I, I, I started a little bit of research on the internet and realised that lure fishing isn't quite like it used to be with loads of treble ups hanging off of, of, of big spoons and things. And um, Tom's a, a local guy, so I got him to come down and show us what's, what's happening. And he's been catching some really, really lovely perch and some um, surprising some other fish as well, bream and chub and everything else out of here. So um, anyway, over to Tom, I'll let you um, explain to us, Tom, exactly um, how we go about this lure fishing nowadays. Okay, so lure fishing, especially at Redbridge Lakes, is there's a lot of perch, eyed, chub. We catch a fair few chub on the lures, as well as a couple of eyed. I haven't had too many. But there's big fish and small fish, so there's a lot of things to target in here. So you can use a lot of gear, but for me to start lure fishing, you just need a light rod, a light reel, some small line, six, eight pound, just something. You can use stronger line if you don't want to snap but just using some light stuff to really target anything in here. This will cover me for any size fish that swims in this lake, really. Okay, so let me just show you a little closer inspection on what I'm actually using in Redbridge Lakes and places similar to this today. Um, so I've got a light rod. This costs about seven grams, but you can get them in all manners of shapes and sizes. For perch, you don't want something heavy in a small place like this, but a seven gram rod is more than adequate for the small lakes, rivers, canals in London, that sort of thing. Obviously, if you're fishing 50 foot of water, you're gonna need a lot more weight, so you'll need a heavier rod. But this sort of rod, 7.6, light rod, quick tip, will do perfect here. It's got a really fast tip, so I can detect the bites from the perch, and it's just perfect for what I need it for, really. Um, moving on to the reel, it's just a thousand sized reel, small reel, you don't need anything big. It balances out perfectly with this rod. Um, it's It's got some braid on it, as you can see. Um, braid is essential in lure fishing because it's got no stretch. So you get all the bite detection way better than you would with a monofilament line straight through. Um, this is really thin stuff because it's six pound braid. Um, and then tied to that, I've got a leader of fluorocarbon because obviously the braid is yellow. So you don't want to use yellow line straight to your hook because the fish just won't be interested. Um, but this is a fluorocarbon leader of four pounds, I believe it is. And fluorocarbon is just an invisible line to the fish so they, they feel more confident eating the bait. Um, and down to that I've got a small size 10 hook, if you see that there. It's a little size 10 hook with about a gram and a half of lead on there just to get it down and get a good cast in this, this, these sort of conditions. It's a little bit windy, so I don't need that much weight to fish here. And then I've got just a one inch little soft plastic. That's just a little paddle tail on there. All that does is when it's falling through the water, the tail will kick up and make a lot of vibration, move a lot of water. And it just literally, it's like a homing beacon for the fish. They'll just home in on that and they eat it. And then as soon as you feel the bite, because you've got no stretch in your line, you get really positive bites and positive hookups. The fast tip just aids you in hooking the fish so easy. And then, you know, you've got six pound line, it's more than adequate and bullion small fish to the net really. So you don't have to mess about with snags, you don't have to be too light or too careful with them. You can just fish and just be safe and just land the fish in your time. Well, Tom, I've just nicked this out of your, um, your little bag of tricks and um, we've got some lovely little um, bits of gadgetry here, all different things that oh lovely um it's um and i've noticed some of the some of the guys some of the lithuanian guys that come over they've, they've been using these big silvery ones um but i'm not quite sure how you how you i don't know if you'd want to use something like this today but how, how would you hook that on so that you know it's it's best you just hook it through the nose or through the body or or what mate um so say it's say, let's just rig it on a jig for an example um, so that's that's essentially what a lure looks like once it's rigged on a jig. Yeah, it's a big it's old hook, that, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, that's a pretty big bait. I mean, perch yeah. will eat that any day. Yeah. But let me just show you how we do that from start to finish. So what we do is we just take what we call a jig head, which is a small hook, in this case a size 4, right. on a bit of lead. That's 2 grams. Right. And the lead just helps it get down and keep it wet in the water column that you need it in. Yeah. So you just pick your, your weight choosing to condition. So how windy it is or how deep the place is that you're fishing but just small hook and you just match it to your bait so roughly if you say you want the hook to cover 50% of the plastic yeah which is about there on this shad so it comes out roughly halfway because if you bring yeah. out the hook too close to the tail 
it will make it stiff and you won't get much action from it. Right. And we want to get as much action as possible. So essentially, if you put it side by side to the bait, you want it to come out like that. Yeah. So to start that, all we do is hold the bait like that, up, up straight, hold the ball of the lead, and then put the hook in through the head, just push it in, and yeah. then once it's in like that, you just want to roll it round, roll the bait around the shank of the hook, just keep rolling until you get to roughly where you saw that you wanted it to come out halfway, and then all you've got to do is bring the hook out in, through the back of the bait, like so, you can see where it's just been brought out, Yeah. and then just thread it round, like that. Okay. And then it comes out perfectly mounted on that jig head, ready to hook the fish when it bites. So oh, yeah. that's a barbless hook we use here, isn't it, mate? You just, just pinch the barbs down, don't you? So yeah, just use some forceps. So it doesn't actually cause a, the fish any more harm than necessary. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot easier to get a barbless hook out of a fish, really. Yeah. And it just saves me time getting it tangled in the net otherwise. So, yeah, yeah barbless is a lot easier to use in places. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, we use a few methods in lure fishing. Like we've got, today I'm using just a jig head, which is just jigging, but we also use drop shotting, Texas rigs, Carolinas. But today I think I'll explain just the drop shot and the jigging method. And it's a lot of fun, you can do it all year round. I like it in the summer most because you catch a lot more fish in the summer and it's not as cold. Um, this time of year, you don't catch as many, but the fish are a lot bigger in winter. So I think it's a lot more rewarding when you do get that big fish. But we're gonna have a go, see if we can catch a few fish and get back to you. Now, mate, so let's, let's go in for a little while and um, have a look in the tackle shop and uh, you can show me some of, this, some of this gear in the tackle shop, what I'm selling and what I should be doing with it. Yeah. Right, now that we're in the warm, Tom, <laughs> we've got, uh, <laughs> I've got loads of stuff here. I bought, it's like a lot, but like a boy in a sweet shop, really. I bought all this stuff off of, um, off of my pal at, at Sprouse and, um, a lot of it was with your help because you tick the things in the catalogue that I may or may not need. But we've got a catalogue about that thick of different stuff, you know, for um, drop shot and um, lure fishing. But this is what I've got. So it'd be good, Tom, if you could sort of just explain to me um, what, which, what does and what different lures for different things and all the rest of it. So at least then I can show people in the shop um, what I'm trying to trying to sell them. So uh, if you can go through it a bit yeah. for me, Tom, that would be um, that would be useful. Okay, so first of all, you've got the basics, which is you've got rods in the right, yeah, in 7 to 28, fine casting weight for a place like this, and you've got reels. So you've got the bare basics, and you've got the braid to go on them, and the fluorocarbon leader. So you're set to start it off. And right. then 
that basically that's that's what I've got with me today. Rods, reels, fluorocarbon leader on a braid main light, and so that's all sorted. You wouldn't need anything else other than that. And then when you get to the business end with the terminal tackle, you've got hard baits, soft baits, jig heads, drop shot, different weights. You've got kits like this. Basically, all this stuff is just what you put on the end, and so you've got different shads and curly tails. There's all different sizes in these kits that they do. You've got different colours, brights and darks, just to try. Because on different days, certain colours work better. But essentially, everything that's here on these racks is basically all, all that I've got in my bags and all that I bring with me when I go fishing. Right. So something like that, that this, this one's got a slot in it. Is that, a, 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 is that where you put oil or something? Or is that how you hook it through there or um, something? Or? With these... They've got the slot in them so that you can rig a weedless hook in them. Right. So that when, when you set the hook and the hook comes out the top, right. you've got more of a gap for the hook to recess into. So that's just, they've got them in both angles so you can actually rig it sideways because sometimes it doesn't matter. But if oh you were God. to use scent, there's ribs just along here that would hold it longer than if it was just oh, a straight okay. body. Okay. So you could just put scent there, but yeah, you can, you can put scent in there. Well, they haven't anything. all got little slots in them like this, so does that mean you could you, you some you can't do it either, or if you want to put a slot in it, you do it yourself with a standing uh, yeah. knife? Yeah, uh, that's, that's exactly what I do. I, when I oh, get home, I just get a pair of scissors or a standing knife or something, right. and I just cut a hole in the baits myself. But most of these baits here have the slots in them ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And these are the little drop shots. Wait, so I haven't got too many of these, but I've got these off of um, Preston's. It's a, uh, uh, yeah, you've got loads of different baits that you can use on the drop shot as well. You've got straight tailed worms, paddle tails. I'm sure I saw some curly tails here. Big shads, tails? small shads. Yeah, you, so you can use all, all these on a drop shot rig as well with the, yeah. the one. And what's this one called? A, uh, They're just standard jig heads. You can use jig heads. again all of these on a jig head. So you either use a jig. This 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 one's got a little eyeball. That's what you were saying earlier. When it, yeah. it looks like a fish's head or something. Isn't it? Yeah. So would you actually cut a fish's head off and use that in place of you, it you or could, not? You could do. Yeah, I'd do that sometimes if I yeah? want to make the bait a little bit shorter. Just cut the head off the bait. Okay. But another rigging system you've got here is uh, they're called the bottom jigs, and these are just like similar to a jig head, but they're jointed. They come right. detached from the actual weedless hook itself. Yeah. Um, the weedless hook is hang on. the weedless hook is here. Sorry. Right. And all you do is attach that weight to that hook, and it is exactly the same as a jig, but it's weedless. So with that shad we had before, if I can find that now. What one of them? Yeah. Yeah. All you do is just put that hook on there onto that shad weedless, yeah. and then pick one of these weights and just attach it to the head. And then you're ready to go, and you won't lose as much tackle as if you're fishing as normal. So where hook. would that weight go then? Would that weight actually go on the hook? Okay, so I'll just show you. Once you've set up your bottom jig with the weight attached, all you have to do is attach it to your clip. So it just slides on like so. And then all you have to do is close the clip, like that. See, it's closed now. And then you're basically ready to fish, like so. And all you've got to do once that's rigged up is just choose a soft bait. So if I go in here. I've got loads. The colours and everything just vary on the day, the conditions. If it's a bright day, I won't really pick something so bright. Usually I go for colours like this if the water's really clear, especially if it's coloured and murky. Something like that is really good. And I use that a lot in places like this today, so I'll just pick this out. And to rig this, you just go in through the head, bring it out the bottom like so, and then thread it round the shank of the hook all the way up to the head. Like that so it's at the head of the hook and now you just got to measure that up against the soft plastic and you know roughly where that hook points coming out you can if you want just put a nick in the top of the bait just so you can remember from your from seeing it and then you just bend the bait back put the hook through the plastic and it comes out the top like so and you can see that hook there now the final thing to do before you cast it out and catch loads of fish on it hopefully is just put the hook point in the plastic so it's completely weedless. And now you can see I can run my fingers over that and I don't get hooked at all. But as soon as the fish comes down and bites on that, that hook pops out and that's ready to hook a fish like that. Is that simple enough? I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> that's what sort of weight would you say that was, Tom? Two. Two and a bit. Two and a bit. Just yeah. hold, hold it up a little bit more, Tom. So take a... Look at that. What a fine so fish. So you just really ate that lure. So he only just took that, didn't he? Yeah. Let me just get a quick picture. So that's lure fishing at Redbridge Lakes. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome.
We'll see you again soon.